hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here you are welcome if you're a new subscriber thank you so much for tuning in and to all the new subscribers that i have received in these recent days hey you're welcome like my name is Antonio Toguma. i film on faith lifestyle and medical school and all things in between including the philippines and in this video this is another video that i don't know where to, where to title this whether it's story time or lessons or something but i really don't know so um from the title you can already see that i met my bully on instagram so literally i'm just going to start the story let's not let's not waste time so let's go Hello. foundation foundation so i got into secondary school when i was, I was nine, nine and i got into the school and because i was nine i just clocked, i just clocked nine um about a week later was when school was resuming because i am born september 7th and that's like always a week before school resumption so i resumed school the next week and everything was quite going okay it's not like everything was okay but i feel like like from the from conception i don't know if that's the english days to speak it but from when i was um little i've always been the person that i would adapt to situations it doesn't matter how difficult it is one of the things that i basically believe is that as long as people have been there i didn't know that this was the, this was the thought process but recently i think this was about 2018 i started realizing that as long as people have been there and they've done that and they did not die i will survive and that's the mentality that i've always been with so the school was not the easiest of all things it was a mixed boarding school and um I got into the school and what even happened so yeah i was literally the youngest and it's not that i was i was i would have been i would have not been the youngest but there was one girl in the class that was also nine but guess what baby girl was older than me with five months and you people know that the difference between a five months old child and a day old baby is totally different she was born in i think may and i was born in september i think that's about five months or four months difference i'm not sure calculate them for me put them for comment section so yeah um she was older than me with a couple of months so i was basically the youngest and you know that when you are the youngest in grade seven which is just one you are you're basically the youngest in the entire school because their cutoff was nine so i was the youngest i was the nine year old in the entire school so no way would so yeah um i was definitely the youngest in the entire um secondary school they had primary school section and kg and all those things and those ones also were in boarding school and all of those things but my gist now was that so basically because i was young i was tiny and everything seniors used to be like ah they used to attach and be like ah, you'll be my school daughter and all of those things so i didn't really enjoy those perks because for some reason right from when i was a child i don't know when people come and become my friend for some reason i don't used to see them again but let me tell you the truth i'm the one that draws back sometimes okay so um in that in those situations i think i drew back and all of those things and there was literally one senior that time that used to take care of me a little not so much but just a little at least i was okay and i was still coping with all the things that they would steal my stuff and i have to call my mom like almost every other weekend that i need i need provision they stole my provision i need this one they stole my this one i don't have uniform again they stole my kinikon they stole my singlet i don't have socks to wear to school i was told my mom like every single weekend that she has to send money to the matron so that i can buy stuff and survive but guess what your girl was still coping i was still coping through all of this and i honestly wasn't even complaining because usually what happens when you complain i don't like this school i don't like this school most times your african parents may not listen to you or at least i thought they would not listen to me and all of those things so i kept on i was still in the school first term second term and then third term i was still in the school um we had what happened was SS3 student that was our hostel captain at BSS2. I don't even understand how that mathematics will happen, Sha. But because like, this was 10 years ago now. Hey, I have 10 years ago, geez. Okay, but well, that's not the point. So yeah, um I was this was 10 years ago, and the SS3 student that was in charge of our room because they usually put a senior in charge of the GS1 room, and I think every other section, <clears throat> I think every other grade from GS2 to SS3, they are in mixed hostels, but mixed rooms rather. Because it was in an, a hostel building and then different rooms so i think just two to ss3 were in mixed rooms while just one were in their own room with a senior so that was how we were going and coping and living and everything and this um ss3 students when they were done they had to go home because they had they were done with work they, they are basically done with every single thing they had to do in school so they had to go home because they are done with secondary school and but well, that's high school for those who don't know what secondary school is so they had to go home and then the junior school junior students who were in their room that's just ones they had to now mix us up with um 
SS like since we were going to just to the next term that's uh, I don't know how to explain term in another English we're going to um, just to the next term so they had to mix us with um, SS3 so that the room is free so that the um, room that we were in before is free for the incoming just ones and all of those things so what happened was we had to be moved right so they moved us and my sister my si I and my sister we, we got into um uh, grade 7 which is just one together because I jumped from grade 4 I didn't do grade 4 mm -mm, I jumped from grade 4 I didn't do grade 5 and 6 so I jumped to catch up with her and we went to just one together so yeah we were moved from the room we were the just one room that we were to the other room and this room that we got into was like you know when you carry a cat and you put the cat in a forest of lions like mama papa i don't know how those people at that time were literally 14 years 15 years 16 years they looked like 20 something years to me because those people they were huge and big and all those things but this person that even did this thing to me she wasn't huge maybe she's my stature currently or maybe in my head she looks like my stature right now she wasn't huge or anything so we were in the so they put us in the room so that night we had, I think they put us in the room in the afternoon, but they were like, everybody was like, ah, they, bit, they want to have their bath, ah, school just finished, they had to do lunch and everything. And then they had siesta and then they said, okay, we, we should go out for prep or something. I can't remember. I think it was after you stay in the hotel for a while, then you go out for, I think, dinner and then you go for night prep. So we had to go for night prep and then after night prep, night prep finishes by like 9 p.m. So we came back to the room. Now imagine a just one student. At that time, I was still nine years old. So me, that they are forcing me to read until 9 p.m. But no problem. I was coping. Abby, even if I was not reading, I was making noise in the class. And when they come and catch me, I will remove my eyelash and put it on the ground and say that if the matron walks on top of the eyelash, she will forget, forget about me and she will not flog me again. That's a story for another day. So yeah, um... So what happened was that particular day by that 9 p.m. We came back to the hostel and they had still not given us bed like giving us a bunk to stay on So our beds were literally on the floor. I my sister and a couple of other junior students So what happened was they gave my um, the other junior students and myself beds to stay So my sister was the last person they didn't give her a bed and what happened was she now this person this particular senior she now carried my she now carried the slippers like let me use my house slippers that i'm wearing currently she now carried the slippers and said if the slippers faces up because there were two beds remaining in the room and she was like if the slippers faces up then my sister would stay on like on her bunk like the up bunk and then if the slippers faces down then my sister would stay in the other bunk that was available with the senior that was there because they basically didn't want her to stay on their bunk and something like that so um what happened was the slippers now ended up facing up meaning that it was her bunk she was my sister was supposed to stay but that's not the point that we're not done with my story yet that if you think that was the least of it all that was the smallest so my sister finally got on her so she put my my sister put her bed later on her on the bunk and everything and one day we came back from night prep and I saw my sister's bed in the middle of the hostel. I think rain fell or something, but okay, no, the middle of the hostel is where people fetch water. So there are two taps on both ends. So when people fetch water, you know, obviously now we are removing your bucket for another person to put water will pour on the ground, water will pour on the ground, like that, like that, for another person again, that water will pour. So the ground was soiled, was soiled and it was very messy with water as usual. So she put my sister's bed there and I remember vividly like I remember my name I can still see them jumping on the bed and shouting 2010 don't show 2010 don't show and they were jumping on the bed and jumping on the bed and I honestly I don't know how my sister felt because we didn't talk about it but she maybe she would have felt horrible she, she might have even forgotten herself because she's so because my sister is the sanguine person who is always the hippie hippie happy happy yo yo and all those things and me i'm the melancholic one i'm the one that keeps things in my mind so she may move on from it easily but me it's not so easy for me to move on so it's still in my mind and maybe this person that did something to her today i've seen people that she called friends at some point that did something to her and maybe she's tomorrow i see her she's friends with them she's laughing with them and all those things and me i'm like i thought we we're fighting with this person but i thought this person was not our friend so how come you are not playing with the person and all those things so one of the things i've come to realize is see in my sister's case i just leave her to whoever she's currently with do deal with your issue yourself the person is not cuckoo my friend before so i will not cuckoo make them my enemy they should stay neutral wherever they were so she was jumping on the bed and singing 2010 don't show and for i like i i think i stood there or i don't think i stood i think i just went to my bed and i was literally like i was 
I can't I can't explain how I felt but I felt very horrible like I felt it wasn't me she did it to but I just felt very horrible because I mean it's my sister you did it to so it's as good as you've done it to me even as I'm saying it now I still feel like I'm tearing up but it was literally a wicked thing to do to somebody because I was like how do you do this to somebody and what even brought my mind to this thing is the fact that um, I saw this tweet on Instagram I've never understood how 14 year 14 to 16 year olds were so wicked and inhuman in secondary school and for what and I was it before I saw this tweet yesterday I actually thought about this thing. I'll put it on the screen but I actually thought about this thing I've been thinking about it for like the past one week it just comes to my mind sometimes and it goes away and I'm like how were they so wicked because she literally just did a 25 year old birth a 25 years birthday I think this year was when she clocked 25 and as she clocked that 25 that was, so this was 10 years ago meaning that she, she's that as, a, as of that time she was 15 and she was this wicked and that's not the point so that's not where it paid me so i was still managing and bearing through all of these things in the school and one day because i was this child that i used to look very skinny and my mom used to believe that it was not normal because every other of my sibling had a little bit of flesh if i thought they were not skinny but they had a little bit of flesh but i was the only skinny one so they used to believe that i had a problem so this gave me supplements to school now I don't know if I can find it, I'll put it on the screen. Edma um Phil Edmark Splinter. She carried the splinter and, she, and usually you just pour a cover of it into your water and you just mix it and you drink it. So she carried I was so that day I was minding my business so because I could always talk to people. I was literally the quiet person who just you know stay on my own. If I don't have classmates to make noise with, I will stay on my own and mind my business. So I was on my own and then she came and she carried this in and she just poured it into my conflicts and Ha! Uh -huh. I was nine, going on ten, and I, I could not say, "Oh God, give me my last power." But I literally just used the last mind I had to stand up, and then I carried. I I still remember carrying the conflicts, and just I think I went and threw it away, and I came back, and she was telling me, oh, "I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry." I did not intend to do that. I just wanted to see how it would look. And once it was, I know that you actually pour, like you you actually don't like to pour. I just went to my bed and I just I just laid down. I, I don't know if I cried. I don't think I cried because for the longest time I didn't used to have tears in my eye. I, I can I may tear up. I may feel like, I, and I feel like that is even worse. I feel like when you don't cry, it's actually worse because it's like you cannot express it. You cannot say what is doing you and you cannot cry what is doing you. So it's like it's inside your mind. So I was just being it in my mind. But honestly, I felt so pained. I felt like I was. I felt very very. I don't know the word to use but I just felt somehow like I, I don't know I don't know I honestly don't know so one of the things that I want to point out from this thing is <laughs> I don't understand how those people were so wicked I don't understand how kids of that age were so wicked how they were so inhumane let me just use the word that the tweet used inhumane because it's not human for you to actually do that I'm like I thought children were supposed to be christ like i thought children were the ones that had more of christ in them but how people are wicked in, especially in secondary school and in boarding schools it should be looked into i don't understand maybe demon used to possess them when they get into boarding school because those boarding school children are they the wicked for africa cool. thankfully my mother was like i'm not even doing well academically so she removed me from the school i didn't even complain about it i don't know i didn't i don't think i ever complained that they were actually bullying me in the school for some reason i just never did so one of the things that I want to point out from this thing is treat people well. See, now that we've met on Instagram, one of the things that I look at, especially nowadays, if anybody is like a junior in secondary, or, or a, one, maybe one of my juniors from secondary school will be watching this, but I don't think I was actually wicked to anybody. And one of the things was actually, I, I met her a couple of years later. I think that was like 2018 now that I met her on Instagram. And I want to look for that conversation so that we're ready for you people, so that you people know what happened. After I had been following her for a couple, for a good amount of years now no not years I, I, follow, I just followed her on instagram recently maybe about two months before this so she put out a poll you know those things that you put out a poll on instagram and you ask where do you know me from and all those things and you just reply on their story so i replied hey you bullied me like that's where i knew you from i, I knew you from you bullying me and she was like i think she replied on her story and said i don't i didn't bully anyone and I said, and she said, are you sure I bullied you? I think she said, are you sure I bullied you? Because that was on her story and you guys know story disappears. So she was like, are you sure I bullied you? And I said, I, re I replied very sure with a smiley emoji. You know that smiley emoji that I like, people see it on the screen. And then she said, I don't remember bullying anyone, but okay. So I replied, I think this was August 29. I replied about two months later. I just put a clap emoji. And 
she she likes the post like you know when you double tap a post and i just clapped like i clapped for her like you don't remember and what what came to my mind at that point was saying is that proverb that they used to say that the person that she used to forget the person that packets that we remember so she was wicked and all those things but she obviously did not remember because ah she could obviously forget and another thing was that school was one of the schools that when you report yourself when you report what a senior did to you to the matron matron will, will, will side the senior and say it's you that was at fault or um i will talk to the senior and she doesn't do anything about it i feel now that i think about it, maybe it's because maybe it was because this girl her father was a deputy governor as that like her father was a deputy governor like as at that point in time so that he was a past deputy governor he was still in power and all those things so maybe that was why she was this wicked and all. but you don't know who people are one of the things that i heard from um gary v sometime this year i don't know if you guys know gary v but it's somebody on instagram i think on youtube as well most likely instagram and facebook i'm not sure if it's on youtube or anything so yeah um one of the things he said was they asked him a question they were like when if, um what 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 advice do you have for students that are resuming um for students that are going back to school and he said something he was like be mindful of relationships like you don't know who is who will make your future tomorrow you need people you don't know this thing that she did to me now she should be thankful in fact one of the things is i have actually forgiven her i don't hold anything against her i'm not pained about it no maybe i'm not pain is not the word because it's still paining me small in my mind that somebody actually did that to me at some point in time in my life but like thank god i've forgiven her because that's another thing if you don't forgive people you're not doing them and you're not doing them anything you're not doing them bad you don't forgive them you're not doing them bad like let me explain the process of forgiving to you or let me put it like this so just imagine that i have not that i still remembered her i kept it in my mind i was going to do a revenge or i just decided i want to do her something i just said i want to keep it in my mind or something and just imagine i now texted her by 2018 and she said she has forgotten me and all those things maybe you would have pained me or that's that's how that's how far it goes they may not remember that they offended you somebody may not remember the person did something to you. so you just forgive you just let go of things because if you decide to keep things in your mind ah the Bible people say we should be forgiven 70 times seven times and it's not because and I saw I saw a post recently I think sometime this week that it's not because you have to count it but because it has to be uncountable you just keep forgiving and forgiving it doesn't one of the things that I have learned over time is to forgive people in advance so when you do something to me sometimes I'm like see I do I can't be bothered that's one of my new things I say it's when it's 2020 that I can't be bothered like you've done something to me you've done it if you apologize to me it's fine if you don't apologize to me it's fine another thing that when people do to me is that maybe i do something for you and you don't say thank you so i'm giving you the things if i'm already saying you are welcome like in advance the, things. the next thing i want to say now is if you if you feel like there's a need for you to actually revenge somebody just report it to god like just report it to god because when you fight for yourself the battle is messy but when god fights for you they will not say soldier come field like everybody would literally know that see it's god that fought this battle it's not between you and her so if somebody did something to you like somebody did something to you just ah god honestly i don't feel like forgiving this person like this is what this person did to me and i honestly do not know what to do but because i, I have to forgive i let go see bible tells us in exodus 14 14 for exodus 14 14 14 this is sweet it's like tongue twister so the scripture that comes to mind at this point is exodus 14 14 the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace amplified version says the lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm bible is telling us here like i prefer this amplified version it's not the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace now that one is too king james ish this one now says god will fight for god will fight the battle for you and you your, you keep your mouth short like message translation it says god will fight for you and you like and you like what should you be doing in that position right and he says and you keep your mouth short like don't say anything mm. Mm. don't no pin no word just forgive them just let it go from your mind and hand it over to god there's this name of Je of god that comes to my mind i think it's jehovah sabios the god of angel armies I don't know there's this song um i know who goes before me i know who stands behind the god of angel armies he's always by my side and there's on that another song that comes to my mind again right now is this is how i fight my oh, fight for you you don't have to bother your head you don't have to say ah this person did something to me 
you don't have to say ah this person offended me this thing is already tilting towards vengeance and all those things i really don't understand why this video is tilting towards there i just wanted to come and do a story time and just teach people what happened because i felt so pained sometimes i just look at her on instagram and i'm like ah now you be this that's when I look at people that maybe I was I went to secondary school with and as soon as I see maybe people that were my juniors in secondary school and I'm seeing them ah they're even looking flashy they look like ah they are babes on Instagram and I'm looking at the pictures and I'm like wow how time flies like see these people now they've graduated secondary school we will not be in that phase forever every phase we see ourselves we will move from there one day there's no phase that you'll be stagnant the only place you will be stagnant is when they put you six feet that's it Every other phase of life, you would move. You would move from place to place. You move from stage to stage, height to height. So when you see yourself that ah, you're at the beginning, you're at the height of this. Ah, uh, maybe ah, uh, in secondary school now, or maybe primary school now, you're in primary six. You will go to just one and be on that somewhere, on that five grades of people again. When you see yourself in history, you will go to university and be on red level, fresher. They will be laughing at you that ah, you're always dressing, you're always this one. They'll be like ah, this one never even blend into school life and all of those things. So it's not a matter of um. Um, you are the top forever in the next phase you are going to you will start from the bottom again starting from the bottom now we're here and all of those things and I'm like how 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 were those kids so wicked like why will a 14 year old because I look at 14 year old and see 14 year old and I'm like what is going on in your head like why why do you have to be so wicked it's, it's, it's something that I don't understand maybe somebody can help me in the comment section because I really don't understand it. Maybe if you understand why 14 year old to 16 year old children are so wicked in secondary school, help me to understand because these people do things that are even more inhumane than adults. Like they are even more inhumane than 24 year olds and the 24 year old is older than them with 10 years. These are things that you will look back on and be like, how do you pour water on somebody's bed and that's the bed person supposed to sleep? How did you even think about it to do it? I thought we were supposed to have childlike minds. I thought we were supposed to have like mind of peace and all those things. It, it looks to me like demon possession. <sighs> so yeah, I leave you with the whole four points that I came with. The first one is treat people well. Treat people well. Like you don't know who we blow tomorrow and we need their help and all those things. I've forgiven her because ah she's born again now. So I look at her like brethren. Ah. As as the same one God with itself, so I can't hold you in my mind. Like even if I wanted to, I can't. So treat people well. Number two, don't hold things. Learn to forgive. Like advanced forgiving it doesn't take anything. I feel like it takes more to actually hold things on people than to actually forgive them. Because when you hold things on them, you are looking for how they will flow or how they will do you a second thing so that you will be able to pay them back or you are looking for their downfall and all those things. But when you are when you're at peace with them your mind is free when you see them high you pass you don't necessarily have to when you forgive people you don't necessarily have to let them back into your space you don't necessarily have to be be with them or be their friends and all of those things so learn to forgive people move on from stuff um the last one is report them to god like if you feel the need to um if you feel the need to revenge and all those things just report them to god just be like god i honestly just want to i don't know this is what this person did to me and i don't think it is fair sometimes you don't even have to report sometimes you just have to tell them that god this is what the person did to me help me forgive and i've seen people that I, I can't remember who i was listening to now and she said there was somebody that did something to her and god was telling her to pray for the person instead of instead of actually like insulting the person fight for the fight the person and it was like pray for this person because sometimes when people do some things like that well that's what i'm saying it would be a demon that is wrong with all those children that used to be like that because some people when they are doing that thing they don't even know that they are doing it maybe it's a demon that's taking over them or maybe it's something that is just inside them that is rebelling or something so when you pray for them god will help them it's only god that knows what people are going through maybe they are going through their own thing you don't know whether they are drinking blood in the cove in the night and you see that secondary school eh children you people be thinking ah children in secondary school they are normal most children in secondary school maybe not most but children in secondary school some of them like boarding school those ones many of them are demon possessed like there's something inside them that is not ordinary anymore it's just god that's happy on the that we are going to the boarding school we are coming back we are alive we are healthy and all those things in my secondary school if people that are in my secondary school they can testify in the comment section i think there was a time they actually said that my matron was sick a bit my matron was sick and something was happening to her her hand they were black black you know where you have like polka dot shapes that is black black dots that's how her hand was i think even her uh, scalp was like that i don't want to use my head but even her scalp 
superstition but yeah even her scalp was like that like polka dots everywhere on her skin and everything and she was like ah that uh, whether whether it was the, the reverend father that told her that be somebody a pastor or somebody told her that it was a student in the school that set poison for her to match and all those things i'm like you cannot look at those things with ordinary eyes so just pray for people you don't know what they are going through you don't know why they are acting that way and i think the person i was even listening to that was saying she was praying for the person that offended i think she was saying she was crying like she had to imagine somebody does something to you that you have to cry normally then god now says pray for the person and you now start praying god please change this person god help me to love this person god help me to treat this person well help me to communicate your love to this person there's no how you will not cry because ah it's painful God still loves us equally. So when you pray for people, maybe somebody that has done something to you, somebody that you just feel like you just hate the person or you just cannot like the person. This thing just came to my mind now. You just feel like you cannot like the person. Maybe we can just just pray for them. Like God, help me to see the thing that you love in this person because God loves us so, and He's jealous. Of, and He's jealous. He's still a jealous God over our lives. Like if devil wants to do something, God is still jealous over our soul and everything. So, like maybe. We, like that prayer, I feel like it goes a long way. Just pray like, God, what do you love about this person? Help me to see the, Help me to see what you love about this person. Help me to love this person like you do. Help me to just adapt to this person. It doesn't matter about adapt now. But when I was a child, I used to, like, when they take us out to swim on, like, Christmas Day, New Year Day, and all of those things. I remember that when I get into the pool initially, I have to adapt to the water because I'm cold. So I sit down on the like on the edge of the pool and i just put my leg in and i'm just trying to like okay let my leg be going in small small and i go in once and i come outside i dip again i come outside and all those things and small 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 i will never remember i will never realize that i'm already adapted to the water i'm already playing inside the water because i don't know how to swim so i'm already playing inside the water and all of those things and like it's from there that you now say ah when even when i'm cold i'm already shivering i'm like and i'm i want to talk and i'm saying i i, I want to eat um I'll eat, I'll eat now. I'm, I'm literally shivering and all those things, and I still want to go back and swim some more. So it's like when you adapt to things as, as, you, are, as you are praying about it, God is helping you because God puts it's God that gives us passion last night, it's God that helps us to feel things, to love people. So He gives us that passion, and when He helps you to love someone, it's like you cannot unlove them. I don't think I don't, I feel like no matter what they do, because it's just the same way God loves them. Because if you're saying, God, help me to love this person like you do. It's because no matter what we do, God still loves us. When you still, when you come back, He's a good Father. His arms are wide open to accept you. So that's how it is. It's like when He when He helps you to love somebody, there's no way you can love them. You will just look past their flaws and all of those things. So yeah, that we've come to the end of this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more story times like this. It helps me know what kind of videos you want to see. So if you like to see videos like this, thumbs up. When you watch my video and you like a particular video thumbs up so that i know that ah, i'm doing well i should continue doing this kind of video up, so let yeah. me know what you think were you bullied in high school how did you go through it what happened i want to know let's just just in the comment section so yeah and so i wanted to do seven days back to back posting on youtube if you have not noticed i've been posting for like the past seven days and this is the last day supposedly but i don't know if this is the last day but this is the eighth but this is the last day i'm posting back to back we resume our normal schedule every wednesday med school and philippines video faq session and in that session i answer questions that people have asked me about med school philippines um general life questions every single thing we we, we dissect it in faq session if you've not watched any video i've done in faq session you can watch one now so yeah i'll see you guys in my next video god bless you remain blessed you can check out my playlist you can check out my um video you can subscribe to my channel like subscribe so that we can start earning that cash we can start earning the money that youtube is still paid not that this is the money is sweet but i've not tasted so i cannot really know whether it's sweet or it's not sweet so help me so that we know whether it is sweet or not so yeah i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys i think sorry my hair will be doing anyhow i know you are feeling the air hey, you want to know my hair plug come i will tell you if you want to know, ask me, I'll tell you. See, this guy is fine. My God, you're so fine. Like, why? Why are you so beautiful? Why? Why?